Yo, what's up, YouTube? GCJ here. If you guys are new to the channel and don't know who I am, I'm the 2019 World Cyber Games Clash World Champion, and this channel is about helping you guys get better at Clash Royale, whether to beat your clanmates, beat your friends, or simply gain some trophies. So, what this video is going to be about is tornado placements. Tornado, one of the best cards in the game. Uh, you can be a lot uh, very creative with it, but you can also be very specific with it. And that's what uh, this video is going to be about, is be about uh, very specific tornado activation placements so obviously activating king tower is one of the most important aspects of clash Royale. the reason being is the fact that your towers are all free you get to start out with them they all do damage um, and they don't cost elixir um, and in the game clash Royale is about whoever uses their elixir more efficiently than their opponent and if you can make use of your towers which don't cost elixir you're going to be able to gain an advantage over your opponent. And that's why activating your King Tower, especially earlier in the game, is going to be uh, very, very useful for you guys because of the fact that you'll be able to use that King Tower um, for the rest of the game, um, even though one of your Crown Towers doesn't go down, for example. Uh, but in order to help you guys kind of visualize this, I kind of separated all of the cards that you can activate King Tower against into three different categories. The first category is the standard category. Every single one of these 11 cards, these 11 cards right here, they all have the same exact activation placement. And I'll go ahead and show you guys that in a bit. Stay patient, keep watching the video. Uh, but yeah, so every single one of these 11 cards, they all have the same exact placement and you can all activate King Tower versus all of these cards. Um, obviously, there are some, like the Mini P.E.K.K.A. you might not want to because the Mini P.E.K.K.A. will get a hit. Uh, you know, Mega Knight will get its jump, stuff like that. But most of these cards, is going to be a really, really good uh, value to activate King Tower against uh, for two reasons. Obviously, like I mentioned before, but also the fact that the Tornado is only a 3 Elixir unit or a 3 Elixir card. And you're going to be able to get a positive Elixir trade on almost every single one of these cards. Um, so that's the first category, the standard category. The second category I made here was the mid tank category. So each one of these cards, uh, there's a very specific scenario in which that you can activate King Tower against for one. And there's also a separate, um, more uh, different activation tile for most of them. Um, and when I'm talking about the Rascals, I want to be specific towards the Rascal Boy. Um, just want to make that clear. The third category that we're going to be going over, um, which is the probably the most important category, is the MISC category. Every, every single one of these cards, you can activate King Tower in a very specific way with a very specific tile. Um, they are unlike any other card in the game when it comes to activating. But that's going to be enough said for these categories. I definitely want to hop into some gameplay right now and start showing you guys these specific placements. The first uh, thing that we'll be going over are the standard ones. Um, I don't want to go over and bore you guys and show every single one of these cards in activating. But I am going to go into some gameplay right now and show you guys just a couple of them. But I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, hop into the gameplay here. The first thing I want to show you guys is the Night Witch. I think the Night Witch is really cool. Uh, it is in the standard category because it has the same exact placement and criteria as all the other standard cards. But, you know, it's coming down. It starts in your tower. You pull it to your king. The bats actually spawn. You get a nice activation. Three for four trade. Obviously, this won't happen too often because of the fact that... You know, the Night Witch is usually behind something, or you maybe it's not full health when it's coming down the lane. But I thought that was pretty interesting to show. Next up, the Hog Rider. So, versus the Hog Rider, with the right timing, you can actually activate and take zero hits from the Hog Rider. And that's going to be a nice 3 for 4 trade. A quick activation, zero hits. And as you guys can see here, these are the standard placements. This is going to work for the majority of the cards that you can activate in the game. It's right where I just placed those two cycle cards right here and right here. Basically just the corner of the king tower and up one. So anyways, I'm back to my tornado. So let's go ahead and go to the next one. Next one I want to show is elite barbarians. A lot of you guys are going to struggle against elite barbarians in the start of the game. You can actually take one hit from each three for six trade. This is why Lee Barbarians is one of the worst cards in the game. A lot of people do struggle versus them if they are higher leveled. Um, but 
you know, they're just not very good. They don't get a lot of value for six elixir, and that's just one of the reasons right there why they're not so good. A three for six trade is absolutely beautiful. Only one hit from each barbarian on my prince's tower. Anyways, I guess let's go with. Uh, I'm gonna place this cage first so we can get back to that later but roll hogs so roll hogs same exact standard placement the only catch is you're only be able to pull two out of the four but it still is a very solid counter um while we have this cage going i'm just gonna cycle through back to my tornado so same exact standard placement versus the goblin brawler of the cage this is why i prefer bomb tower uh, over cage in splash yard because as you guys know if you're playing against graveyard if you can activate king tower you're gonna be in a really nice spot defensively anyways uh i think i guess the last one here that we'll go over is the balloon um i don't want to take too much of you guys time on this section of the video because obviously they're all the same placement but i thought this would also be pretty interesting one to show you do have to take a balloon hit which is a lot but you don't take any more than that you get the activation with the death bomb um and if your king tower isn't activated you also will take a balloon hit on the king just keep that in mind but overall it's a, f a three for five trade and you can use that in situations where you don't have another balloon counter for example and it's just a really solid play to do and one balloon hit without the death damage on your counter tower isn't a whole lot of damage actually but, you know, I think we showed most of the important ones. But, yeah, that is the standard category. Definitely go ahead and rewind to the beginning of the video where I show all 13 of those cards. For all 13 of those cards, you can use the same exact placement that I just did in order to activate. But, other than that, I'm going to go ahead and cut here and we're going to go to the next category. So, here we go. The second category. So... With the second category, you need two different things to happen. You need the card that you're trying to activate against to be placed in a very specific way, but you also need to place your tornado in the right spot. So the way in order uh, in order to activate versus these mid tank cards, uh, they have to be played towards the inside part of the arena. So for example, if they play behind their king tower, that's good. But let's say if they played their knight in the corner of the map, like I just played these skeletons, this activation placement would not work. But the knight is was placed in the correct area, the inside part of the, of the uh, arena. And I also placed my tornado in the correct spot, which is the inside part of my tower. So you take the standard placements, which are right here and right here, and you go one more in. And that's going to be activating versus the knight. Before I did place uh, some play testing, I didn't actually know this was 100% possible because this is actually a really scary thing for splash yard players. Um, I might be uh, deciding to place my knights towards the edge parts of the map from here on out in order to prevent activating uh, versus the knights because that's really scary for splash yard players. But next one I show is the same thing, the Valkyrie. Um, inside part of the arena, it just has to be the inside part of these three tiles of the bridge. It's going to be the same exact thing. Right there. Inside parts of the tower. So, it's pretty easy to remember because it's inside, inside. So, as long as their, uh, as long as their unit is placed towards the inside part of the arena, they're going to be able to walk up on the, this, uh, kind of side of the... Uh, of this kind of lane right here and then you're gonna be able to place your tornado on the inside part of your king tower and have a nice activation so i guess the next thing i'll show is the rascal boy let's go ahead and split them up right there and i might try and snipe this rascal girl out of existence just real quick so same thing, Rascal Boy is placed on the inside, inside placement, you know, if my King Tower wasn't activated, the Brawler would have activated, if that makes sense. And I think the last one we didn't go over, oh, we didn't go over two of them yet. So same thing, the Ram Rider, a little bit different, but yeah, as long as it's placed on the inside area, you're going to be able to activate King Tower with the same exact logic. Um, this is most likely not going to happen though, if you think about it, because as long as you're playing against an experienced Ram Rider player, they are going to be playing their Ram Rider on the outside parts, which is going to make it impossible for you to activate King Tower 
versus that Ram Rider. But last one to go over is the Prince. As long as it's placed on the inside part, it should be good to go. I am going to stop his charge right here. I don't know why. I shouldn't have done that. But, yeah. And then you just pull it in. Okay, I think my skeletons actually messed it up there. Uh, I, I'm going to go ahead and put a little thing in the top right here to my last video. I actually had a nice King Knight Tower activation versus the Prince in my last video when I played Splash Shard versus the Giant Double Prince deck. But that's going to do it for the mid tanks um, activation uh, tutorial, I guess. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next section of the video. So first up, we have the wall breakers. Wall breakers, the placement is very specific. Um, what you want to be doing is right here. It's going to pull that in. It's going to kill the first wall breaker. You're actually going to take zero damage, three for two trade, but um, obviously a really, really solid activation. Next up is the skeleton barrel. You want to basically be doing uh, four tiles directly above the uh, king tower. And as you can see, that one little Larry is going to be activating that king tower. Uh, classic Larry, don't touch that meme. <laughs> third of the misc category is going to be the baby dragon so this was interested interesting in testing it's pretty difficult to get the timing down but whenever your opponent places a baby dragon in the back what you're going to be doing is um one down from the last one actually skeleton barrel is four up this one is three up my timing might be a little bit off here now we're good so as you can see you're going to take two baby dragon hits on your crown tower but it is gonna get that nice juicy activation uh onto the next one skeleton dragons are pretty interesting i had a really hard time activating but um for some reason if you block one of the skeleton dragons and then place the tornado in the opposite lane four tiles up from your king tower you're able to activate the reason why you have to block uh or make sure that that other skeleton dragon doesn't get in the way why don't I just demonstrate it for you guys? I'll show you guys what happens. Um, I'll show you guys what happens when you don't block that one skeleton dragon. It, this took me forever to figure out, but yeah, basically same exact scenario. You have one coming in, you have a tank in front. Uh, if you don't have the tank, for some reason, the skeleton dragons like will die too quickly. And then if you do the tornado, this that skeleton dragon on the left, it body blocks the right skeleton dragon so you can't get the activation anyways I, I thought i'd include this it's super impractical but i thought i would show that you can activate versus skeleton dragons with the right conditions next activation i want to show you guys is pretty cool it's the electro wizard uh, basically go five tiles up from the standard placement and since it has the double pronged uh thing of the electro wizard you're gonna be able to have a nice activation three for four trade not too much damage it's really really solid uh, next one I'm gonna show you guys is versus e golem uh, e golem is very specific it can be very very difficult to activate uh, versus e golem but I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys that now so elixir column coming in let's say you know you got an elixir golem defense bunch of stuff is going on blah 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 uh, you know let's go and take some damage and then we're gonna be able to activate it's really important to only pull one of the blobs if you try to pull both blobs then the tornado isn't strong enough to get the activation down uh next one is the tornado oh uh, sorry wow next one's the tornado who would have thought <laughs> next one's the goblin barrel so assuming the goblin barrel is centered uh basically what you'd be wanting to place that tornado is right on this carpet tile right here and you're gonna have a nice activation and it's also a really nice placement uh even if you already have your king tower activated it's a really nice placement to you know defend the goblin barrel for example if they outcycle your barbarian barrel or your log something like that uh i do want to show real quick um the minor placement so obviously minor it's a little bit different you have to be a lot more creative there's not a specific placement because the minor can be played all the way around the tower but one of the hardest spots that the minor is put um is right here and you're going to be wanting to place right here 
and that's gonna be the best placement to activate king tower uh, whenever the miners place right on this side i see a lot of people failing their activations when the miners placed right here it's one of the hardest uh spots to pull to your king tower but i thought i would might as well uh go ahead and show that correct placement just right here um under this carpet tile right there but um yeah those are the very specific kind of niche um activations versus all of the kind of misc uh, uh cards in the game anyways that's gonna be it for the video really hope you guys enjoyed if you guys watched the video all the way through i really appreciate you as well as i appreciate everybody that goes down to the comment section leaves a comment or anyone who subscribes, turns on notifications, all that stuff really helps me out. Definitely do that. Uh, the goal on this video is also gonna be 200 likes. Hopefully we can hit that goal once again. You guys have been amazing hitting that goal in my previous videos. But yeah, that's gonna be it for the video. I hope you guys learned something as well as, uh, I mean, I learned something. By doing all this testing, uh, it took me hours to make this video, but to, uh, to do all these testing and figuring it out, you know, I learned stuff that I didn't know before, like the activation versus the night, for example. But yeah, like I said, that's going to be it for the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Stay juicy and peace out.